All right, good evening. Let's call this meeting to order. The Champaign County Board Committee of the Whole for Finance, Policy, and Justice. It's Tuesday, May 10th, 2011. The time is 6.07. Roll call, please. Alex. Here. Ammons. Here. Anderson. Here. Benzel. Here. Berkson. Here. Betts. Here. Carter. Here. Coart. Present. Esri. Hol Holderfield. Here. James. Here. Jay. Jones. Here. Kurtz. Here. Langenheim. Here. McGinty. Here. Michaels. Here. Mosier. Nudo. Here. O'Connor. Petrie. Here. Quisenberry. Here. Richards. Rosales. Here. Sapp. Here. Schrader. Weibel. Here. We have a quorum. Seek approval of the minutes for the Committee of the Whole Minutes, April 12, 2011. So moved. Moved by Mr. Carter. Second. Second by Ms. Cohort. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion, Aye. motion carries. Uh, seek approval of the agenda. So moved. Moved by Mr. Michael. Uh, switch your signs, Excuse Mr. Excuse me? Mr. James. Uh, who second I got that? that much money. Mr. Carter, <laughs> who second that? Mr. Carter second that. Uh, discussion? Not necessarily a small bill. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Public participation? <laughs> Apparently none to, for tonight. A real, a real moment. Uh, communications. I have uh, uh, one thing here. You've got a... Um, Note to the board, which I meant to send out this morning, but I failed to add it, to attach it to the, to the note I sent to, sent to a cat, so you have a hard copy of it on your desk. The main thing is it has a tentative schedule for the uh, voting on maps of the redistricting committee. And of course, it's tentative. We, it depends on what we get out of the committee. Any other communications? It's something I am setting up in case it comes to us. How we'll react. What they do is independent, maybe independent. I'm just guessing what they'll do. That's why it's tentative. Ms. Cohort. Um, going back to the memo we sent out, I thought we were going to have uh, several maps to look at. That's possible. I don't know that. That is possible. Mr. Curtis. <laughs> maybe I'm in, incorrect, but May 11th and May 12th are not the correct dates. There was no commission meeting on May 11th, was there? Was that Thursday? Was that the? What? That was then. The May next 16th. one is on the sixteenth. May sixteenth. There will be one on the sixteenth. Okay. All right. Everybody make that correction. It's. Uh, you said it was tentative. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you very much. Come on. Uh, so okay. Yeah. The the sixteenth will be a commission meeting, not the eleventh. And on that date, we should have all the maps by the sixteenth. What's today? Today's the tenth. So well, there's no meeting on, tomorrow. What's that? Oh, there's no meeting. Okay. I, I thought there's a meeting tomorrow. I just assume that's so. No. That okay. Was, well, because their maps won't be ready. Okay, I didn't know that. Supposedly, like I said, till, towards the end I of wasn't paying meeting. attention to what they're doing. What right. I was And then the 19th, we'll probably have the maps in okay. front of Okay, anyway, them. you have an idea what's going on. What it comes down to is uh, if this is any idea, we'll be voting on the maps at regular county board meetings. Okay? Just as an FYI, the commission will have a public hearing on May 16th. Correct. And does the, the county meeting. board anticipating a public hearing on May 19th before the board meeting on the maps? Yeah, might as well. So that would be at 6.30? Yes. Okay. We can do that. That'd be fine. Um, okay. The other communications. Okay, seeing none. Uh, Justin Social Services, um, Mr. Richards cannot make it tonight. Mr. Carter said I could just do this one item here. Uh, for him, uh, we have four reports, uh, sorry, five reports, animal control for March 2011, e EMA for April 2011, Head Start April, uh, probation court services for March, public defender for January. All of these are on our uh, website. We have a motion to accept and place on file. So moved. Moved by Mr. James. Second. Second by Mr. Benzel. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, there's no other business, and the chair obviously has no report. Policy. Yeah. 
Good evening, policy personnel and appointments. We have several appointments on here. Uh, we'll ta start with item number one, Board of Review, term 6-1-2011 to 5-31-2013. Mr. Weibel. I nominate Laura Sandifer. Uh, is there a second to that nomination? Second. Second by Mr. Alex. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? That passes. Um, Item number two, Farmland Assessment Review Committee, term 6-1-2011 to 5-31-2015. Mr. Weibel. I nominate Mr. Steve Mosier. Second. Second by Mr. Rosales. Any discussion on this nomination? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Any opposition? That motion passes. Uh, item three, Urban, Urbana Champaign Sanitary District. Uh, one vacancy term 6 1 to 5 31 Mr. Weibel. I nominate Ms. Diana Lenick. Second. Second by Mr. Betts. Is there any discussion on this nomination? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposition? That motion carries. Number four, Beaver Lake Drainage District to fill vacancy from Wayne Bus Phone resignation term 520-2011 to 831-2011. Mr. Weibel. I nominate Mr. Daniel Eller. Eller? Mr. Daniel yes. Eller. Is there a second to that nomination of Daniel second. Eller? I'm sorry, second by Mr. James. Any uh, discussion on that item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? That motion carries. Uh, item number five, Zoning Board of Appeals, one vacancy available, term 520-2011 to 1130-2015. Mr. Weibel. My nomination is, is Brad Pasolacqua. Oh, shoot. Pasolacqua. Pasolacqua. <laughs> I had it right. Is there a second to the, second by Mr. Betts? Any discussion on this nomination? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? That motion passes. Item six is Penfield Water District, term 6-1-2011 to 5-31-2014. Mr. Weibel. Uh, I nominate Mr. Steve Parrish. Second. It's been nominated and seconded by Mr. Betts. Any discussion on this item? All in favor on this nomination? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? That motion passes. Item seven is Sangamon Valley Public Water District term 6 one 2011 to 531 2014 Mr. Weibel. I nominate Mr. Paul Kleinbell. Uh, is there a second? Second. So Ms. Anderson seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion passes. Uh, B, County Administrator Report. The first item is the vacant positions listing for your information. The second item, uh, there is a memo in your packet on pages 40 and 41 explaining a proposal for the establishment of an ongoing health insurance committee to be made up of employees and uh, management and county board members to work with our broker in an ongoing fashion uh, on the issue of health insurance and particularly for this committee to work on annually coming up with uh, the recommendation for the county board and for the labor agreements for health insurance structure. And so this is before you with the request that you would agree with the appointment of two county board members to this committee. And I, yeah, Mr. Mr. Ron. Therefore, I would like to uh, nominate Ms. Astrid Berkson and, and Ms. Stephanie Holderfield for this committee. And the terms would be equivalent to the our, our term in office. So it be a, a two-year term minus what we've been through so far through uh, December 1. Second. Second by Mr. Alex. Any discussion on these two nominations? Ms. Petrie and then Ms. Coward. Can you change that? Uh, oh, it's not on the nominations, but it's an information question for Ms. Busey about the committee, your recommendation is then this becomes a permanent standing committee with, within the county structure? 
Um, I would not sure I would phrase it quite that way. This is a committee to assist the county administrator in the annual working through and coming up with a recommendation for health insurance. Um, this is not a committee that would be subject to the Open Meetings Act. This is an administrative function to provide advice, but to also ensure that employees have the opportunity to participate in and provide their insight um, and their resources as we're looking at the issue of health insurance each year. Thank you. And I think just I'll come back to Mr. Kurtz after Ms. Cohort. One of the things that mm -hmm. Mr. Weibel just pointed out is that any committee that we set for this board may not be uh, returned in the next board, and so it's only for the duration of this board's time. Uh, Ms. Cohort. Yes, I see uh, Larry Sapp uh, name down here. So we're going with Ms. Holyfield. That a switch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a, a last minute switch. Are the, other, uh, are the others correct? The yeah, other? the others are not appointed by you, the county board, but those are the individuals the who have agreed to um, participate in the, in the process. Uh, any other discussion on this item? Um, just a point, this is a recommendation, I guess, because he nominated them. We can vote on it now. <coughs> yeah. All right. We can vote on this now. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposition? That motion carries. The next item is a request uh, for your authority to release an RFP for mail services. Um, and it begins on page 42 with an explanation, and then the actual RFP is in your packet. It's been moved by Mr. Betts, second by Mr. Sapp, no, Mr. Benzel. Um, any discussion on these items? Mr. Weibel, I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, you know how many companies do this? <laughs> how, many how many what? How many companies, how many companies? do this? Yeah. Um, we're not aware that there are, are many of them in this area, but well, we will. Uh, yeah, like maybe two or three with one major one, but. Any other questions on the release of this RFP? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Any opposition? <coughs> that motion carries. Um, item C is requests to request, and I'd like to ask for omnibus on both of these. Uh, request approval of proclamation des designating the week of May 1st as National Correction Officer Week. And item two, request approval of proclamation designating the week of May 1st. Is that first or is that supposed to be 15th? 15th. Yeah. 15th? First and 15th. As National Police Week. Second. Moved by Mr. Sapp, second by Mr. Kurtz. Is there uh, any discussion on those items? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? The motion carries. Uh, treasurer report. I don't see our treasurer. <laughs> there were a few questions you may be at answer, but request opposition to House Bill 1218 and support for Senate Bill 1710 regarding regulations of tax sales of delinquent property. Is there a motion? So moved. Mr. Langenheim, second by Mr. James. Uh, are, is there any discussion on this request from the treasurer? I guess we really can't ask the treasurer because he's not here. But any general questions that maybe Ms. Busey can answer on this? Ms. Petrie. Uh, oh, would he be available for the meeting next Thursday so we can ask him some questions why he's taking these particular stands? Um, I can't guarantee that. We can certainly send him a request for that. If you don't support it at the committee, certainly you can keep it on for right. a full All right, full thank board. you very much. Microphone. What does it mean when you have a, a bid of 18% or 0%? What are they bidding? I think that the idea read that and kind of think I understood, but there are real estate people up in here that might understand better than me. Uh, but what I took away from that uh, house bill was uh, this was designed around a particular county where the person there was doing um, yes. inappropriate things, and he was taking the highest interest level on property, and then they were, of course, recouping that money internally instead of the lowest price to sell it to the people. Um, and so they put this out as a safeguard, I would say, to try to fix that. 
I'm just trying to understand what does one percent mean. What I think that's how much the sale is. Is that There's right, Mr. Alex? The general process of a tax sale is the people the who are, the mm -hmm. people who are buying the taxes, so to speak, bid in essentially a reverse auction, uh, which mm -hmm. is basically how much they are going to charge the delinquent taxpayer in interest to redeem the property. To get it back. Yeah. And so the, in, the way it's supposed to work is you're supposed to take the low bid, which is the person who's most favorable to lending the money essentially to the delinquent taxpayer to pay the taxes. Okay, thank you. Ms. Anderson, did you have a question? I was just going to say thank you because I had some of the same questions. I was trying to figure out who was paying the 1% and I, I thought maybe it was the opposite and I was one, you know, it didn't make sense, but that makes sense. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any other discussion on that? Mr. Weibel. It appears he's just asking for a letter of support. In the past, letters of support can have come right out of committee. So if it passes now, that means I would write the letter tomorrow. I was, this is not a resolution. Right. I guess the, the question from Ms. Petrie wouldn't get answered by Dan if we went on and authorized the letter of support we only, tonight. We only do resolutions. If it's a resolution, it would go to the full county board. But this is just a letter of support or unsupport. Right. So. so perhaps, Mr. Weibel, you could um, I would suggest this, intervene with that this, with uh, actually, Ms. Petrie. Ms. Petrie, why don't you just call them up yourself instead of me trying to arrange it. Okay, so I don't know what action we would take on this at this point, except to that it can move from the committee um, with some recommendations. There's a motion on the floor, so. Okay, well, you have to vote it down in order to keep it. Okay. <laughs> All right, so we'll go ahead and vote on this. All in favor? Aye. Any opposition? Aye. All right. That motion will continue on. Um, Item E, County Clerk, monthly fees report April 2011. Moved by Mr. Bett, second by uh, Ms. Coward. Any discussion on this item? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Seeing none, that motion carries. Item F, ordinance establishing Champaign County 2011 apportionment plan. Moved by Mr. Kurtz, is there a second? Second by Mr. Rosales. Discussion? Ms. Petrie. Microphone, please, Patsy. So I can hear you. I, I move to divide this into two parts. One part has to do with the size of the board and the number of individuals per district, and then the second one would be the amount of pay for the members of the board. It's been moved by Ms. Petrie and seconded by Mr. Langenheim to divide. Discussion on the motion to divide. Roll call request and second by Mr. Kurtz. Uh, any other discussion on Ms. Coward? Ms. Coward, use your mic so we can hear. I'm just trying to uh, clarify why you want to divide it. Uh, because my suggestion for dividing is that it's two entirely separate issues. Mr. Uh, Nudo. Thank you, Ms. Chair. I guess um, this, these subjects have been debated quite a bit, and I, I fail to see why we want to take it to another level again. And uh, I would vote not to separate them. This has been discussed ad nauseum. We've got a, a commission that's working on 22 and 11, and uh, I just fail to see why we're beating this to death. And I mean it, to death. Uh, basically, one or two people have brought this up, and we haven't... Uh, uh, we haven't changed our mind, so uh, I'm just trying to figure out why we're doing this again. Thank you, Mr. Nudo. Mr. Langenheim. Yes. The proposition regarding the size of the board and the proposition regarding the pay of the board members utterly unrelated. And it's entirely possible that board members might favor one and not the other and feel abstracted and having to vote for both of them at the same time. If, as the right honorable member from whatever district he comes from, is correct, 
and we've already made up our mind, why are we voting at all? Thank you. Any other members want to discuss this issue before we have a roll call? The roll call is on the motion to divide. All right. The clerk can call the roll. Alex. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Benzel. No. Berkson. No. Betts. No. Carter. No. Coart. No. Esri. Holderfield. No. James. No. Jones. No. Kurtz. No. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. No. Michaels. No. Nudo. Nudo, no. <laughs> Petrie. They got, they got the U and the D. Yes. Quisenberry. Yes. Richards. Oh, sorry. Rosales. No. Sapp. No. Weibel. Yes. That motion fails. Back to the main motion of establishing Champaign County 2011 apportionment plan. Um, any other discussion on that item? Roll call. Re roll call requested. Is that a second for the roll call or is that a discussion on the item? Sure. No, I have a second on uh, Mr. Langenheim. Go ahead, Mr. Sapp. Uh, I guess, you know, I'd do a motion to amend. I, this $80 is just crazy to me. And, you know, if we're going to do anything, let's keep it at 45 And so I'd motion to amend whereas, which I think is the fifth paragraph, change the per diem back to $45 for the meetings and to strike the said per diem $45 for the special meetings. Your, your request, your motion to amend is to amend this to $45 and, and what was the second part? To strike the $45 for special meetings to include um, special committees, subcommittees, labor negotiation sessions, uh, okay. agenda preparation meetings for chairs and vice chairs. So it's basically what it is today. Second. It's been the motion to amend. It's been seconded by Mr. McGinty. Any other discussion on motion to amend to reduce the pay um, to $45 and to strike special pay? Mr. McGinty. I think more accurately it is, it is uh, to keep status quo. All right. Status quo. Good. Mr. Carter. Well, admitting it, it's, that's what it is now. So why don't leave it like it is if you're going to do that? I think that's what Mr. McGinty wants to keep status quo. Uh, any other discussion on this motion? Yes. Ms. Petrie. Well, I can't support that at all. When we uh, discussed this in the study session, we calculated that the $45 now today is $85, and this is going to be set for 10 years, even though in theory it can be changed somewhere along the next 10 years when the after the 2012 election. So that would put it then, as I calculated it, at least $100. So to set it at $45 is ridiculous. And when I looked everything up uh, and what's happening in the counties through the Association of Counties in Illinois, every single county is raising their rate of reimbursement for members of their county boards and setting up funds for education and covering mileage for and so for us is we are at the second from the bottom right now and in 10 years they won't even have a line on the chart for us thank you <laughs> thank you any other discussion mr james well on the per diem i i'm going to support what larry and them have said because not only are we talking about increasing per diem, but we're also talking about increasing meetings, which would be an added cost to our county. And so I don't want to be like Pius and stay at home. I would rather attend based on his advice to me. But so I'm going to support Larry and them in this and just keep it as is for now. All right. Any other discussion on this? Uh, Mr. Jones. I, I just don't see why it needs to be raised at all. I don't see what the, the point that Patsy was trying to make that it, that forty-five dollars ten years ago was worth eighty now. I, that doesn't make any sense to me. We're not we're not here to be paid. This is supposed to be a public service, and there there's really no reason to increase the. Nobody's given me a reason why we need to increase it. But furthermore, I 
I really, I, I want to state this again. I've stated this when we talk about elected official salaries, that we always look out and compare ourselves to other counties, and that means that we're underpaying elected officials and we're underpaying the county board members. And I think that's, that's ridiculous to keep doing that. We need to make our decisions based on what's best for this county. And I think we need to be a trendsetter in this state as far as wasting public tax dollars and not look at just trying to keep up with the other counties because you know they, they turn around and do the exact same thing. Well, Champaign County's paying their elected officials so-and-so and, -so, and they're, they're raising their per diem, so we need to raise ours. And it's just a vicious circle and there's no reason to keep, keep looking at other counties to, as, as a basis for our decisions. And I'd also like uh, someone to, uh, to uh, tell me that if we raise this to $80 that we're gonna get better results from these meetings. I, I really don't see how that's gonna have any effect at all on the, the work that we get done for the taxpayers. Ms. Berkson and then Mr. McGinty. Uh, first, this graph says the, the, the per diems are costing them much less now than they used to because there are fewer committees. And I look around the board and, you know, we're people who can afford it. But this, the current per diem won't pay for a babysitter. You can't have somebody who needs a babysitter. You can't have somebody who uh, needs to go out to eat if we have a 530 meeting. I should pay the cost second. Mr. McGinty and then Mr. Carter. Yeah. Well, if you want to be I'm, a good I'm mayor, sorry, Mr. Carter. Oh, I, I will you, defer you until Mr. he's done. Okay. Mr. Carter. I thought you said yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Carter. He deferred to you, Mr. Carter. Oh, okay. If you feel that Samaritan, just don't accept the $45. Like I did the, the gas money. You don't have to take it and let the people that need it have it. We're the lowest paid county in the whole state. And if you want to look at it, if you want to come here decent, you can't hardly clean your clothes for the little money you get. Mr. McGinty. I'm not, I'm not very concerned about what the stats say. I think that this is a, a bigger issue about compensation, for example, for board chair. Um, related to this, there are only so many people who can do board chair, and there are only so many people who will take a, a role on like this. To we ask a hell of a lot of our employees right now, and to suggest that we deserve significantly more money from a percentage standpoint now than we have been making. I don't I don't care where we are compared to other counties. I think that it's important to, as Mr. Jones suggests, uh, draw the line and, and, and set an example for how we are managing our county. I will remind our membership about what we have had to do to put our county in the financial position that it is compared to other counties in this state. And that comes with sacrifice. And when you compare relative sacrifice, Ours to accept $45 a meeting is nothing compared to what we're asking of others. Mm -hmm. I think that this is a, a reasonable request that another board can revisit another time. Thank you. Mr. Nudo. You know, you just have to go to page 39 and take a look at what the sacrifice was. We've got uh, 14 positions that, have, uh, that are vacant that we didn't, uh, we didn't fill, can't fill. We still have a policy in place on that. And uh, I, I concur with uh, those that are opposing this. I, I just don't see, this is, this is more uh, in terms of, uh, well, this is doing the right thing. And I just cannot support giving a 37% raise uh, to, to, the, to the board when others have foregone uh, increases over the last two years. This is, you know, Astrid was exactly right. This, um, we can afford this. We can afford this. We do this for a different reason. I'm gonna go to Ms. Colbert and then back to Ms. Bergson. I'd like to say that um, the county board has sacrificed. Before it was any kind of freeze on wages, okay. um, we sacrificed our, um, our, our uh, um, educational benefits, whether we can go to different seminars and whatever. Uh, we've cut down on the meetings that we have attended. 
And uh, so I think we have sacrificed over the 10 years. I mean, $45 uh, might be a lot uh, for some people, but it's been over 20 years since um, we, the county board has gave itself a raise. And I don't think the public, because the public already think that we make a uh, hell of a lot more money than $45 a meeting. And I can't see where we would be <clears throat> doing any kind of disservice to the county or to the um, uh, public if we vote on this here raise for up to $80 uh, per meeting. And I'm going to vote for um, I'm going to vote for it. Uh, Ms. Berkson, if I can just take a point of privilege just for a second. Um, uh, just for even though we may have um, very honorable reasons, in one way we measure against other counties for raises to employees, for recruitment of our administrators, for paying our police departments. We do that all the time. It is a standard practice for this county board, not other people, but this county board to do comparables and comparisons. And since I've been here, we've done a lot of them, have increased salaries in the last year, even though we have cut at the same time. So it is, uh, it will create, there will be an impact of this decision uh, on the composition of this board, on the composition of people's ability to serve. Uh, I'm an everyday average uh, worker, uh, I'm in a uh, social field, which we know we don't get paid a lot. Um, but I am just one person, so this is not about whether I get a raise or not. I may not be on this board at all. However, those who are in the financial bracket that I am in, this board will go back to a very class-structured board, and that will be an impact result. Maybe that is a fallout of this, but there will be an impact result, and we need to be clear on the impact of this kind of decision, Ms. Bergson. That was my point. Uh, when I look around and I see people c who can afford it, I am offended because of all the people who should be here, whom we should hear and see, who can't afford to come on the board. Because $45 won't pay their costs. It won't pay for the babysitter, it won't pay for the dinner. Mr. Kurtz. Yeah, uh, I too have had that uh, response from some of my constituents, you know, uh, the county board, they had no idea what we make. Um, when I told them $45 a meeting, they were stunned, literally stunned. In fact, if we go back to the election, the News Gazette wrote an editorial on this county board, and it was talking about why people want to run for the county board. And one of their sentences was because of the money they make. And that is a quote from that editorial. And I looked at that and I said, are they dreaming? Uh, I can afford $45, I can afford zero. The, the, the point is, is that we need to, after 24 years, make a uh, concerted effort to get a little bit of a raise for, I mean, we're talking about $45, uh, 40 bucks to, to raise it to 80. I don't think there's a problem there. I don't think any one of our constituents is going to come to us and say, oh, you're stealing taxpayers' dollars with $80 a meeting. Uh, I don't see that happening. Uh, now, whatever happens, this is not for us, necessarily. It'll be for the next board. And if we don't do something now, it's another 10 years. Isn't that correct, Ms. Busey? Another 10 years before we can do this again? Or six years? Or Five you, years? Have, you have the opportunity before every, every election, election cycle, but this is the last opportunity you have to put it in place for the next, next group board. to be elected where you would be paying the same per diem to all board members at the same time. The only other alternative would be to do it 30 months before it would go into effect, two and a half years before it would go into effect. And then it could apply to all board members because you would do it six months before the next group is elected and they wouldn't receive it until the third year if they were going into a fourth year term. So, seven year. We don't do it now. Uh, Ms. Michaels and then Ms. Holderfield. Yeah, I'm sorry here. Um, looking around the room, not everybody knows what everybody's situation is have no idea what some people have or have not gone through in the last couple of years. So we cannot assume 
that everybody can or cannot afford things, and I think that's not a good thing. I think it's important that, um, like some of the other people have said, that our employees are really struggling to try to make ends meet. And we have ran voluntarily for these positions. I'm not saying getting a little something for your time is a bad thing, but I don't feel that at this point that we can actually afford, especially if we go to a third meeting, to add more money to the budget when we're taking away from the employees. And like I said, once again, nobody knows what everybody in this room has gone through in the last couple of years. Thank you, Ms. Michaels. I appreciate your comments for the finance meeting tonight. Thanks. Ms. Holderfield. Um, I am going to oppose any kind of a raise. I certainly didn't run uh, for this position for the money. Uh, I ran because I wanted to provide a better community uh, to my constituents. I think that um, I'm just going to have to agree with several other people that uh, we have asked our employees to take a freeze uh, and um, we may have a little bit more money now which is a good thing and just because we do have a little extra cash I just don't believe that we should go ahead and spend it on uh, raises for the county board. Uh, you know, I think we've got to remember that we are here to provide a service, and if we got nothing, would we all still be sitting here? I didn't even know there was any kind of a salary when I first started this process. I really didn't care. Um, and when I found out that there would be some reimbursement for my time, I was, I was thrilled, to be real honest. Um, but to have an increase to the next board uh, and be responsible for taking that position, I cannot do that given the uh, financial times that we're all living in. Thank you. Mr. Betts. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm, I'm going to take a different tack than other folks. I've been on the board for a long time. This issue has come up over and over and over again. We are we find it impossible to raise the per diem for county board members. I personally have voted against it a number of times um, because I think it's, it's a red herring, quite frankly. The whole employee issue, by the way, is a red herring. There is no employee in this county that has gone without a salary increase for 20 years. 24. If that were the case, there would be not just pickets. Um, out, outside this building, um, there would probably be objects being thrown at the building. So I think we should stop talking about that this in relationship to our employees. And when we say that we can increase it later on, let's be realistic. It will be another 10 years because the a future board is not going to be willing to increase the per diem for half the members and not the other half and say that someone's worth more than they are. We've gone, by the way, we've gone through that once before um, and, and had it repealed. So it will be another 10 years. So it effectively will be 30 years. I think we ought to have a little bit of respect for what we do. I think county board members do a lot of work answering constituents, reading materials, calling up folks in the county to find out what's going on, going to many, many, many meetings that have no per diem whatsoever because that's what you do as a responsible county board member. I think as county board members, we actually should be attending the National Organi Association of Counties. We would learn so much. I've been able to attend it one time, and I learned so much from other board members, from special presentations. These things are valuable. We no longer do those things, and I think that's a shame. Will $45 make or break most people? Probably not most people. But I can tell you that if we have to do a labor negotiation at one in the afternoon and I'm on the labor committee, I have to take a half day off, vacation day. And that is a, a huge financial loss for me personally. I do it because I like being on the county board, I respect the process and what we need to do, but we do make sacrifices. It's part of what we get into, but I'm not sure any of us got into the idea that we were going to have to use our own vacation days um, to become an, a, a proper county board member. 
and, and fulfill some of our roles, we love to beat up on ourselves. And I don't think we should do that. I, I, 80 is not a perfect figure, for, for sure, but I, I do think it is time that we actually acknowledge that we perform something valuable in this community. Will there be people who say, you get paid too much, and will they write a few letters to the editor? Absolutely, they do all the time, it happens. Um, and I respect the right of people to do that. The most controversial thing over the years I've ever seen is this issue, is county boards pay. Um, and you, it's not a partisan issue because both, both sides try to not um, give, give themselves a raise because they're afraid in the next election their opponent will say, he voted to give himself a raise. You know, it, 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 it happens, that's the nature of politics, but I think we should kind of move off that dime. Mr. Rosales. For roll call. Roll call. Is there a second for roll call? Second. Mr. Quisenberry seconded. Um, clerk, I'm sorry. And would you clarify what we're voting on? Clarify the question, which I think is oh, the yes, amendment. Oh, yes, we will. Okay. We're voting on the amendment. We are voting on the ordinance to establish Champaign County 2011 portion. We're, 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 we're voting on the voting amendment. We're voting on the amendment. 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 That's right. Amendment. Motion to amend. Amendment is. To reduce. So a uh, yes, or if I state. recall, a yes would be. Would do maintain reduce it the to 45, status quo. Right, would maintain, maintain the status quo. Right. A no would be to. All right. If the clerk can call the roll. Alex. Yes. Ammons. No. Anderson. No. Benzel. Yes. Bergson. No. Betts. No. Carter. No. Coart. No. Holderfield. Yes. James. Me? <laughs> yes. I thought you said Jones. <laughs> yes. Kurtz. No. Langenheim. No. McGinty. Yes. Michaels. Yes. Nudo. Yeah. Petrie. No. Quisenberry. No. Rosales. No. Sapp. Yes. Weibel. No. That motion fails. Yeah. Um, back to the main motion. Mr. Quisenberry. I, I'd like to make a motion uh, similar to Mr. Sapp's, but just to amend the, um, the dollar amount to $60 instead of 80 Is there a second to Mr. Quisenberry's? Second. Second by Mr. James. Um, Madam Chair, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm having trouble without a scorecard here. The motion to divide passed or failed? failed. It failed. Okay, so we we're voting on the on the un, the omnibus motion essentially at this point. Yes. Or discussing That's the omnibus correct. motion. Okay. That's correct. And Mr. Quisenberry has made an amendment to the omnibus motion. That's right. Thank you. And Mr. James has seconded Mr. Quisenberry's request to $60 for the per diem. Discussion. Sixty dollars to the per diem. Just as a point of clarification, are you only amending the eighty dollars and leaving the two tiered with the Correct. forty-five dollars? Thank you. Discussion on this item. Roll call. Who requested that? Mr. Sapp. Okay. Roll call requested. Any other discussion? We're roll call on changing the per diem amount sixty dollars per meeting. Eighty to sixty. Thank you. The eighty dollars to sixty dollars in the ordinance. That's not me. <laughs> All right. If the clerk. Okay. Let's clarify the yes and no. Um, the yes is to support Mr. Quisenberry's request to change it to sixty dollars, and the no is to not support that. Alex. Ammons. Uh, yes. Anderson. No. Benzel. No. Berkson. No. Betts. Yes. Carter. Yes. Coart. Yes. Holderfield. No. James. No. Jay. No. Jones. No. I'm sorry. Kurtz. I'm sorry you went too fast. What was James? No. James was no. Okay. Jones was no. No, Jones. Okay. 
All right. Hertz. <laughs> no. Langenheim. No. McGinty. Yes. Michaels. No. Nudo. No. Petrie. No. Quisenberry. Yes. Rosales. No. Sapp. No. Weibel. Yeah. All right, that motion fails. Back to the main motion, which is the ordinance establishing Champaign County 2011 apportionment plan and omnibus motion. Um, is there a request for a roll call on this? Roll call. Roll call requested by Mr. Rosales. Who was the second? I'll go second. Mr. Best seconded it. All right. <laughs> Committee? Unamended. Undivided. Right. I'll just say that it's on what we have right now, which is the ordinance establishing the Champaign County 2011 apportionment plan as it stands. No. no, sir. No. That's to keep the. Um, I just really wanted to, Mr. Kurtz. Clerk, if you could call the roll on that. Alex. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Benzel. No. Berkson. Yes. Betts. Yes. Carter. Yes. Yeah. Coert. Yes. Yeah. Holderfield. No. James. No. Jones. No. Kurtz. No. Yeah. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. Yes. Michaels. No. Nudo. Yeah. Petrie. Yes. Quisenberry. Yes. Rosales. Yes. Sap. Weibel. That motion carries. Last item for policy is uh, Chair's report. Number one recommendation for amendment to resolution number 7143, establishing organization, duties, rules, policies, and procedures of the Champaign County Board. Is there a motion for that? Second. Moved by Ms. Petrie, second by Mr. Quisenberry. Discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposition? Aye. That motion passes. That's all from policy. Wow, I can't believe that. All right, let's go back over. Point of order, for which, yes. which items are going to the full board? I'm going to okay, go sorry. over that. Um, items one, two, three, I'm sorry, no, let me correct that. Those that are going on consent are items one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, B2, B3, not B3, that's a request. Uh, C is on consent. Uh, and they'll be read then, okay. Although it'll still be on that agenda, it passed. Um, county clerk's monthly report. Uh, that's it. That's it for consent. That's it for consent. Thank you. All right, Mr. McGinty, finance. First item from finance is the uh, nursing home board uh, performance of per, uh, evaluation of management performance associates located on pages uh, 64 to 75 of your packets. Is there a motion for approval for purposes of discussion? Second. Is there a motion, I'm sorry, to receive and place on file? Thank you by Brad, seconded by James. Sorry, discussion. Carol? I, I do need a clarification on this. Um, this is a recommendation. Okay, we're item A1. And just their oh, I, thank you very report. Much. Thank you. Anything else on that? 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item two is the recommendation for renewal of the contract with MPA. And, right. and as, a, as a point of information, the uh, contract on 80 to 104 of your packet under IA. Motion for approval by Tom, seconded by Stan. Discussion. Carol, go ahead. Thank you. Um, uh, this, I believe we had a discussion in our caucus maybe about um, two months ago, and certainly at um, four committee meeting a month ago, asking for an opportunity to have a discussion here on whether we should renew this contract with MPA. That discussion did not take place. Um, the recommendation from the um, nursing home board of directors is just that, a recommendation. I would ask that the committee uh, consider uh, other options before we arbitrarily renew this contract. We talked initially when I came on the board when we got MPA um, to help turn around the nursing home. That discussion really was to turn around the nursing home, that it would not be a permanent um, fixture at the nursing home, and that we would reevaluate hiring our own uh, director for our nursing home uh, at the end of this turnaround process. We've seen, obviously, some uh, increase in from where we were um, as a result of MPA's turnaround process, but I don't believe that it's necessary for us to continue to spend upwards of uh, I wish I had had this earlier because I would have gotten the, I can't see on this report where the total is that we've actually spent on this, but whatever that huge total is, if I added all this up, um, certainly our fiscally conservative board members should support us not spending that money if we can hire an executive director to run our nursing home as efficiently as um, we know we can after the turnaround has been done by MPA. So Other I, comments? I oh, sorry. Sorry, Carol. Uh, Tom? There was no one more skeptical on this board of hiring MPA when we hired them than me. I fought a tooth and nail because I really thought we should have the board, um, this board, have closer oversight over the nursing home, have the Justice Committee more intimately involved. There's also no one that is more pleasantly and happily surprised to see how well this has come out. We've had, in some years, hundreds and hundreds of thousands in deficits. And in a relatively quick time, this has turned around. We're not out of the woods yet. It is a very precarious situation on a month-to-month -month basis. But one of the nice things is we're not talking about privatizing the nursing home. We're not talking about any of that kind of stuff. There's real hope that we are going to have a long-term care facility that has an enhanced reputation, that has financial accountability. From what I can tell, the Nursing Home Board of Directors <coughs> that are appointed by this board and are accountable to this board are doing a very, very good job of asking the questions of MPA. They're keeping their feet to the fire and, and vice versa. We're getting the information. We've had regular presentations by MPA. We're not bleeding the way we were, and that's really, really important. Do I think there may come a time in which we should um, have an RFQ out there to see if there are other people could, who could do this job and do it uh, more competitively? Absolutely. I, I think that time will come when we're, when we're stable enough that we should see, are there other methods of, of doing this? But right now, I do not think we're in a position of just saying, well, we're going to give them a six-month contract, and we're going to hire an executive director, and one, as an executive director, you're not going to get them in six months, and I'm not sure you'll save that much money, um, and have the executive uh, director have all the financial expertise that these folks have. I don't think that just because we have this contract, it's a lifetime sinecure, but I don't think we should throw it out. I think it's way too early to be doing that. Other comments? Chris, then Stan. Um, then I strongly concur, I think, with, with what both uh, Ms. Ammons and Mr. Betts have said, although I think they're planning on voting, different, voting differently on this. Uh, I do, uh, I am impressed by what MPA and the nursing home board working together have been able to do with what my understanding, uh, limited though it may be, uh, is was a very bad situation before, uh, before they became involved. 
And I think anytime you're looking at a turnaround of this magnitude, probably three years is an unreasonably short period of time to come to a conclusion. So uh, I do think it's appropriate to renew this contract, uh, you know, this time and, you know, potentially in another time as well. But I do respect the opinion that such an arrangement should not be assumed to be permanent and that at some point in the future, I think a future board should look at whether either it's more appropriate to bring this function back in-house uh, or to look at alternatives to MPA uh, using a competitive selection process. But I am I am wholeheartedly in favor of renewing this at this point. Stan, then Patsy. Well, Tom must have read my notes, but good for you, Tom. I agree. Uh, Scott Tapley, when he was here, twisted my arm a lot. I was strongly, like Carol, against the board giving up their authority over that. Uh, I can remember many meetings, though, we were just bogged down with too much little stuff and not really seeing the big picture, and they've stepped up, and I think it's been running okay. Is there room for improvement? Yes. I support giving them the contract again, and uh, I also think down the road we ought to look at taking it back, but do it in a timely manner and work with them to where we sort of exchange it and it's running smoothly. Patsy? Well, um, I think I am more in line with what Ms. Ammons has said. I have felt this way for a long time that when this contract renewal uh, would come up before the board that we should have time to sit back and talk about uh, many directions. Some of those would uh, be, are there other people who can do the job? Can we reconfigure this? Right now, the adding up of the numbers that we were given, it's a million dollars that have been spent uh, since they took over uh, just on uh, the consulting firm and the administrator. That's a lot of money and that we need to think about how that's being spent. I'm very disturbed in the new contract that the recommendation from the uh, nursing home board is that there's one more degree of separation between the county board and the nursing home board and that the recommendation is that the uh, nursing home board of directors approve the appointment of the administrator and not the county board. So inch by inch by inch by inch, the nursing home has been removed from really any oversight of the county board, and I find this to be a very dangerous move. Uh, so I would really like to see us take this to a study session and ask ourselves exactly what we could do. Maybe we renew the contract for a year, and in that time we look at how we can bring it back under the county board, or we might find out that this is absolutely the best pathway for us to take, but just being given renewal of the contract a priori is not a positive choice. Thank you. Alan, then Astrid, then James. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when, we, when I first came on the board, uh, we did uh, control the nursing home, and my observation was that everybody had an opinion about how the nursing home could be run. It's pretty hard to run a nursing home or any kind of a business entity with 27 different opinions. And uh, so we, we worked very hard with a number of people to put together the nursing home board and to hire a management firm. I find it amazing to uh, reward the management firm with the kinds of comments that are being made tonight about their performance. I find it amazing. Usually with a renewal, uh, it's either uh, the fact that they have not performed uh, or in this case have miraculously performed taking it from a 1.8 million dollar deficit to uh, slightly in the black. Now, um, you, can, you could say that, uh, as Ms. Petrie said, that uh, we uh, don't have control over the administrator. Well, that's very true. You know why? Because when we first set that up, the, the administrator became the employee of MPA, and they have the right, and as an at-will company, to hire and fire. We have not got that. We don't have that right anymore, Patsy. I'm sorry to say you can't control who the administrator is when that person's an at-will employee. Secondly, if we hire an administrator, as Ms. Ammons has suggested, we'll be in the same boat as we were with Mr. Buffenbarger, who was given numerous kinds of directions from numerous people on this board, and he didn't know which way to go. 
Now, same person has direction from one employer. So you, you cannot go back to us running the nursing home. You get an administrator, you do a search, as Tom pointed out, might take six months, and then the next company that comes along and hires that person for 20% more, you're in the same boat with a six month loss of time to get the, pers the next person up to speed. If you think that Management Performance Associates is not doing the job over the next contract, because I fully expect this thing to pass, then you should do an RFP well in advance of this kind of a vote. Now, people have carped about this, and here we come to the final decision-making process, and we're saying, let's put out an RFP. Makes no sense. Do a study session and do an RFP after that makes no sense. If you want 90 days in advance to put out an RFP so that company knows exactly what their shortcomings are and that you have time to find another company in advance of when the contract ends, that makes sense. I have been to every nursing home board meeting save one with Jan. And I have not seen it save Pius. Maybe I'm gonna leave somebody out any of the other board members coming to these meetings. Haven't seen a one of you. McGinney, excuse me, apologize. You were not a board member at the time. But the point is, the point is, not, I'm sorry, I know who was there and who wasn't there, but the point is, we have put in place the proper mechanism to run the nursing home, and I'm not gonna dismantle it. I'm not gonna see because somebody's ego is involved or somebody's thinking they can do it better or we can hire administrator better than MPA can do it, I fail to see, I know we can't do that. Further, MPA has all the contacts in the state that gets us out of jams when we are tagged and when we are involved in different things that uh, we as a board or we as, a, as somebody as an administrator does not have the contacts. They're in this business. Thank you. Astrid, then James, then Jan, then Pius. I don't, Mr. McKinney, I don't want to speak. James. Wrong James. <laughs> James Quisenberry. Astrid first. Uh, it's manager's duties number four, I think, that we're. Microphone, Microphone, please. It's manager's duties number four here that we're fighting about and it's really it's not that we would go out and hire them it's just that we get to pass on them. given the amount of money a person could lose in a nursing home I think uh, acceptable to the Champaign County Board is a reasonable thing to have on them we need to I do think we need some kind of control and I they are just writing out our control I think four should not be changed. The rest is fine. Quiz. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to echo something uh, Mr. Betts said earlier, and that is uh, I trust our nursing home board who we empower to operate this for us. I, I, I look at our construction projects. We don't pretend to go in and become a general contractor for the construction projects. We, we hire IT consultants for some of the IT work we do. We're, we're not, we have a lot of opinions, but we don't necessarily have skills in this area. And the nursing home board was selected to operate this for us because there are skills in that area on that board. Um, I intend to support renewing this contract because I think uh, there is a track record of good work being done here, and I would like to give this company an opportunity to work when things aren't dire and see what they can do over a three year period where they're succeeding before we go and uh, renew them a second time. Um, and I would, I would suggest that when, when that comes up, when this three-year contract comes up, we do consider a competitive RFP and we do it well enough in advance that it can actually have a chance of getting done. Jan? Uh, looking back, to three years ago, I was hesitant in the beginning too and a bit skeptical, um, but uh, going to the presentation from DeKalb and was willing to uh, give it a chance and having been on that board, and I think that I have probably only missed one board meeting too, 
Uh, I'm really pleased with the, the progress and what MPA and comparing the information that we get back when I was justice chair and we were dealing with a lot of other issues and had less time to spend um, on just the nursing home, but we get so much more information, not only at our board meetings, but we are given updates by emails on the census and anything else that, that comes up that, uh, that MPA feels that it would be well for the board to be aware of between meetings, uh, and that's much appreciated. But I think in, you, you've looked at the materials, uh, the progress we've made in reducing uh, the contract nurses, which uh, was a cost in not only financially, but uh, morale-wise and affects the uh, quality of, of care as well. Uh, complaints from employees have been reduced. Um, the financial picture looks a lot better, but still the cash flow is very tight and regulations seem to be um, changing constantly and we're faced with the possibility of Medicaid payments being reduced and perhaps even Medicare. Uh, so it's a constant balancing act and I, I think it would be really precarious to make a change at this time and uh, I certainly will be supporting renewing the contract and hope that others will as well. Pius. Just went back to those billings uh, that uh, you received tonight, uh, it's, it's roughly between 900000 and a million dollars. Uh, I would point out, though, that uh, about $300,000 of that is for salaries uh, for the administrator and for, well, the equivalent of, a, of an accountant that we would have paid anyway even if we hadn't employed MPA. So you should just subtract $300,000 from that as far as cost us money. We would have, that we would have paid for that anyway. So now we're down to uh, the basic fees, which is 180 a year plus uh, travel expenses and a few other things like that. I just want to clarify that. Anyone else? Ralph. Uh, like Tom, I've been around here while a lot of this has unfolded. My experience with nursing home backs, goes back to the time when the county board was hiring lawyers from Florida to break the union in the nursing home. The nursing home has always been a place of contention. It's an unhappy place. It's not, by its very nature, it cannot be happy. But I will say this about that. There seems to be, a, I'll quote Richard M. Nixon, <laughs> there there's, is a lower level of complaint and anguish coming out of the nursing home than we've had for some quite some time. And inasmuch as this contract is not in perpetuity, I see no harm in extending it. Was that Ralph quoting Nixon? I'm just making sure <laughs> I've got this right. I've got uh, Al here first. <laughs> Al. Thanks. When I first came on the board, uh, there was a lot of contention at the nursing home. There were quite a few, in fact, nearly hundreds of complaints coming out of the nursing staff. Uh, I look back this past and I saw 29. Uh, that to me is is progress. Uh, some of them were perhaps not the, the most flagrant of problems, but uh, I have to look as a businessman at a business. This is a business. Uh, even though we take care of residents, we have a great reputation. Word of mouth in this county is that the nursing home is probably one of the best nursing homes in this county and perhaps in southern Illinois. Uh, they wouldn't have that kind of reputation if we had a poor management team. Uh, Dollar-wise, as a business professional, when I see a $1.8 million deficit to a quarter of a million dollar uh, profit, uh, I'm saying there's progress. When you can make a nursing home profitable, and in most cases, nursing homes are only profitable uh, on the backs of its residents. This nursing home, I think this management team earns another contract in my mind. Thank you. Um, anyone else for the first time around who has not spoken yet? Okay, we've got Carol, then Patsy. I just wanted to separate two issues because other people are watching outside of us here at the board. One is that the appointed nursing home board 
is still at the discretion of this board to be appointed regardless to who runs the nursing home, whether we have an administrator of the nursing home or a private company running the nursing home, that board is still appointed by this board. And they are not one and the same and they don't come with the contract. The second thing is, have we actually had an audit of the nursing home since MPA? Have we shifted money that we were losing at a tune of $1 million plus dollars and shifted it into a private contract at the same tune of $1 million? Have we really reduced the cost of contract nursing? You know, really having an outside audit, uh, not an internal audit, but an outside one to really measure the effectiveness. I understand Mr. Nudo's point that, you know, you're right at the end of this and this is a timing issue why this was not on the I remember Mr. Quisenberry asked for this item to be on, but we never got to that point. So I do understand why he would want to extend the contract. I just want to say for the public standpoint that we just went through a half an hour discussion about 40 bucks and get to a million dollar item and say, hey, just give it on away. They're doing a great job. Let's leave it as is. Maybe they are. Perhaps they are. And it looks like on all four fronts that they're doing an absolutely superb job. But we really need to know that as a board and an administrative board prior to us just saying, hey, here's the next contract, take it away. I think that that is the process of this board that is, I hope the new board would take exception to. Deb has a point of clarification before Patsy uh, continues. The nursing home is audited by the outside auditor each year. So it has been audited each year of operation under MPA. And the year 2008, the nursing home suffered a net loss of $1.8 million. In fiscal year 2010, they ended the fiscal year about $200,000 in the black, and that includes all payments that are made to MPA for the operation during the year. Patsy. Uh, first, I have an information question. I read the minutes of the nursing home uh, board as I said, the board uh, wants the uh, nursing home board to approve the administrator. They want the contact for th contract for three years. And then they want to remove, I'm quoting, remove kill penalty from the contract. What is a kill penalty? Alan? That particular paragraph was installed at the start of their duties for the express purpose that if something happened to the nursing home at the time that they took over, that we would have basically a kill clause. It's no longer necessary. It's no longer, it was never in, it's not needed right now. So uh, the board and MPA and Deb discussed this and, and that, was, uh, that was the reason why we, we took it out. Mr. Nudo is correct. The nursing home was in such dire straits when they came in that this board wasn't sure the nursing home was going to continue to exist and didn't want to be stuck with a three-year contract to MPA if the nursing home actually went under. And if you look on pages 78 and 79 of your packet, that is the language that they are referring to be stricken. And it's been replaced with a different out clause in terms of, you know, if this contract needed to be terminated. Okay, thank you. I thought I had figured that out, but I appreciate the uh, clarification. I, in response to uh, Mr. Nudo saying my comments were in such short term, I agree with Ms. Ammons. This item should have been on our agenda two months ago so we could have had some of this conversation and not be down to the usual thing that happens and that we're in a time crunch and we have to make a decision. I cannot support a three-year extension of the contract. I could possibly support 18 to 24 months with the proviso, as Mr. Quisenberry said, that we don't go through this short term and that we have a chance to talk about this long term on how we can handle the nursing home and not just say, okay, we've got to have a contract up or out and that's it. Brad, the microphone please. Uh, I, w I would like the opportunity if you if is there anyone else I'm going to give everybody else one more chance and I'd like to make a couple comments if that's all right with you Brad anyone else okay so I, I try to wait till the end and I just have some very quick comments first four years I was on the board we talked about the nursing home 80% of the time 
80% of the time. So anybody who's been on fairly new, you know it hasn't been nearly that much. And those that were on at that time know the pain. There is still a lot of work to be done. Absolutely, there's a lot of work to be done. Things are more tenuous than you can imagine with regard to our ability to keep this revenue positive. Uh, I'm sorry, net positive. Um, it's been said several times, but think about that. We were losing $1.8 million. We were talking about over 100,000 bucks a month at one point, over 100,000 bucks a month. Remember we cut the daycare center in the nursing home for those that were here because things were, we're looking to trim anything. For those that were here, you remember that. Tom, I agree, uh, time for an RFQ at a, at a later time. Yes, not now. Million dollars spent, well we've saved a hell of a lot more than that. Just looking at $1.8 million in the hole at the time, and Pius brought up good points regarding what that, what that million dollars spent really means with regard to administrator's salary and all of that. I spend a lot of time talking with Mike Scavato at MPA. We talk about the legislative end of things. You know, he's in, he's in contact with Senator Ferrick, Senator Ryder, other senators from around the, the state looking at our reimbursement rate, trying to stay a step ahead because it's incredibly unpredictable right now. You know, JCAR, uh, the IGT, the, the transfer is, is something where we are, we've lost money on Medicaid beds and we want to be a Medicaid heavy home because that's what we want to be but we can't afford to be. MPA, somebody said it earlier, understands how the state operates. They are fighting for that. They are fighting for it. Now, they have been with other counties for a long time. DeKalb, we talked about DeKalb a lot, but they've been with other counties as well, helping them out of, out of the woods and into profitability for a long time. Listen to our reps. You know, Alan and Jan work this. I, when we assign people from our board to be reps, I, I, I've been lucky to be on, on negotiating teams for the nursing home. Um, Alan and Jan are on that board, and I believe them. Did you hear what they said? I believe them. That's all I have to say about that. Anyone else? Ready to vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Good discussion. Next up is an approval of resolution authorizing application for a public transportation capital assistance grant under IDOT from the nursing home. Is there a motion for approval? So moved. By stand seconded by Pius. Discussion. Al. Uh, Cameron, uh, this is a, can I have? Uh, this is a nursing home issue. Oh, I'm sorry, nursing, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, wrong, wrong resolution, all right. Any questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item C from the RPC. Ordinance for the County of Champaign, Illinois to affect the Intermediary Relending Program, IRP, with rural redevelopment. Is there a motion for approval Seven. by Stephanie? Is there a second? By Geraldo. Discussion, Al. Yeah, thank you. Cameron, please. Uh, I, I think this is. I'd eight. be happy to answer any question you have about the nursing home, too. But <laughs> <laughs> you sure? I thought you knew everything. No, I don't know. Uh, so we'll have to get you in on it next time so we can get some answers from you. Uh, I, I'm, I'm in favor of the RPC lending uh, rural development, but I would, I would like to know how many of these loans are not up to date at this point? Uh, we've made loans before, but through the RPC for business development. Um, yes. A couple of uh, millions of dollars, actually a few million of dollars. More than a couple, yeah. More than a couple of million. Yeah. Uh, how do we stand on repayment uh, of those loans uh, at this point? So you're asking about the existing loan programs? Yes. Um, our current loan portfolio is about $7.2 million uh, that we have loaned to about 55 businesses in Champaign County. 
Um, our default rate, uh, if you will, um, and we're a little bit friendlier about you know how we default on loans than the bank is. Um, it's uh, we generally run about two percent or a little bit uh, lower than that. I would say that um, we're starting to get up in that area where we might be seeing our default rate run at you know four or five percent. Um, and then I would say that uh, probably somewhere between 25 and 30 percent of our current loans um, are um, underperforming. So in other words, we may have converted them to interest-only payments or come up with a new payment schedule in some fashion. They weren't able to meet the payments the way that they were scheduled. <laughs> Thank you. Diane. Underperforming, are you talking 90 day, 120? Um, or does that it, also include it, it could days? vary. It, it's basically we put something in non or underperforming at about ninety days. Right. And we have a protocol between you know zero and ninety days that we follow with our loan clients. Sure. But once we get ninety days behind, do you work any of these out and renegotiate them and try to get them to uh, all of them? I mean, the two and the less than two is great, but four or five creeping up is a little. Well, it is, but again, it's it's just symptomatic of what's happened with the economy. Um, and again, keep in mind that as a general rule, um, we have three different loan programs now. We're talking about adding a third one. Uh, two of those three in particular are intended to be higher risk loans. So we're, we're sort of um, taking on some risks that a traditional lender wouldn't normally take on. Um, so the fact that our, um, you know, our default rate is creeping up, you know, sure. maybe into that four or five percent range, considering the type of loans we're making, um, is still not too bad. And part of the reason that we're able to keep it like that is exactly what you said. Um, if, if somebody misses a payment, I mean, we have contact with them uh, immediately. We sit down with them. We look at their financials um, and we come up with a plan. And that plan may be that because they're going through a temporary downturn in their business, maybe we would convert them to interest-only payments so for a period of months. Renegotiate or we absolutely do, yeah, okay. um, and we do that with all of our clients, mm -hmm. um, with the exception of those who won't work with us. And we do have a few of those. And then finally, my last question is: Do you have charge-off amounts? Am I talking out of turn here? Uh, I'm sorry. Charge-off amounts, or am I talking out of school here? I, I'm sorry. Charge-offs. Uh, charge do well, you have things of that nature? We do. As a um, I loan? would say in a typical year, we budget uh, somewhere between twenty-five and maybe 40000 for charge-offs. Um, I can tell you that uh, in this particular year, uh, it's going to be significantly higher than that. Anyone else for first questions with Cam? Uh, Carol? I just wanted to clarify. Who qualifies for this type of loan? Well, I didn't bring all the detailed criteria, but this is um, a loan program that is aimed exclusively at rural areas, first of all. Um, and you, we could fund uh, any, uh, you know, sort of legitimate, uh, reasonable type of business. And we go through the same criteria bank does. You know, do, do you have the financial strength? Do you have a business plan? Do you have an accountant? Do you have financial projections? I mean, you, you have to do all that. You can't just walk in and get money. Um, but uh, it's aimed at businesses in rural areas that will create jobs in rural areas. But this program is different than the other ones we have in that uh, local governments are also eligible to borrow from this program. Um, our other programs are geared uh, all, only to businesses. We can't make public sector loans. Um, but in this particular program, we could make loans to communities of 25,000 25, population or less. Patsy. Um, Microphone, please, Patsy. Um, Mike. It's from paragraph two, and I, it's uh, page 108. And I just wonder if it was because it wasn't proofread. Uh, I'm down on line three after 250,000. To businesses located in rural areas and communities of less than 25,000, comma, as well as communities of less than 25,000. Is that a redundancy? In yes. Okay, thank you. Deb, did you have no, some? Because that says it's not. <laughs> Hold on. The second time he's referring to more than just Champaign County, he's referring to several counties. But it says communities. No, yeah, I think it's to businesses in the first case and to communities in the second case. <laughs> communities in the second well it it, it no, could have been there. phrased better but um, it does uh, it it says business and communities first and then I, I think Deb is right the the intent with the add-on there is to say that 
um, this is not limited to Champaign County. Okay, but then solve it by just putting a semicolon after the t first 25,000, and that'll do it. Okay. Where? Yeah. Al. Uh, yeah, um, when you talk about rural development, Cameron, uh, are, are we talking about uh, home development on rural lands? It, it could be if there is job creation tied to it. Uh, in other words, we wouldn't be able to make a loan to, uh, let's say, someone that's it's in the ag industry that says, you know, I, I'm, I farm this land, you know, myself, my son, uh, you know, I need to invest in some type of uh, farm development, but I'm not going to create any jobs. It's still going to be just me and my son. I'm, I'm so there's job creation requirements. I'm talking about actual structures residences uh, would you lend money to someone who wanted to put up a half a dozen homes on a rural property because no. it builds we can't do residential this is for business this is business only yes okay alan yeah i i agree with uh what you're saying uh, but I, I really would like you to check to see for for uh, rural growth if we don't if we can fill uh what do we call it infill yeah. infill. infill yeah we have a developer a developer, uh, which is a business, uh, receive if the government can receive the funds to put in TIF monies for infrastructure, and then they get their money back, and you get your money back as homes are sold, and uh, it saves the uh, it saves the community a lot of money up front to do the infrastructure. So I could see some rural growth without in, infringing on on uh, ag areas if they stay inside their 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 boundary. <coughs> so you said you'd check that out, and I, I really encourage you to do that because I think we could get some real growth uh, going in TIF districts to a developer. Thank you. Yes. Anything else? I'm ready to vote? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, Cam. Thanks. Next up is from the clerk, resolution authorizing acceptance agreement between Champaign County and the Illinois State Board of Elections for a voter registration state grant. Is there a motion for approval by Al? Is there a second by Pius? Is there any discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. County Administrator. Um, because I've been gone, the first three reports aren't available this evening. I will get them done and just get them sent out to you for your information before the board meeting next week. So the first item is number four, uh, approval of budget transfer 110011. This is, as is explained in the memo in the packet, to separate the IT division of county's operations into a separate department so that we can more easily um, determine what is the true cost of our information technology infrastructure countywide. Is there a motion for approval on that? So moved. By Chris, seconded by Stan. Questions for Deb? Carol. Deb, I didn't understand this at all. I, I, isn't it already a separate department? No. What is it? What is it is it? in administrative services budget. And I would like to have IT have its own budget so that from the perspective of planning and. Any other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, the next item is a recommendation for a change to the budget, annual budget process with regard to uh, the county board's review and participation in the annual budget process. As most of you are probably aware, we have for the past several years conducted legislative budget hearings for two, maybe three evenings, two to three hours each, where you are presented with, you know, the budgets some of them um, consolidated for all 56 of the county's funds, which total over $110 million in expenditures typically. And um, this is an attempt, it, it, it's virtually impossible to review the budget with any great detail with the entire county board. You would have to be here for days. But this is um, an idea to engage all of you at least in some portions of each of the budgets that are presented to you and uh, eventually adopted and approved by you in November. So this would, um, this recommendation is that you would sign up to be a budget reviewer and that each department would then individually present 
to their budgets to those board members who are assigned as reviewers and any other board members who are interested in attending obviously could but just to get a little bit more direct interaction at a more specific level with the elected officials and department heads and the county board is there a motion to approve this recommendation by carol is there a second second by astrid discussion jan well this is a question um you're wanting us to fill out and indicate the, the ones that one through five, and we would be picked for three. Is that the way I read it? Well, I, I think every board member, depending on how many board members choose to participate, that's why I'm asking for five. It may only be two, it may be five. Um, but we kind of have to see what the board's interest is in this and see what kind of response we get. Yeah, and I guess uh, further on that question, I'm, I'm looking at it and then I'm thinking, well, would I like to have an area to maybe learn a little bit more about right. it. Since I'm on the nursing home board, right. mental health board, I would assume that I would pick something else so someone else could find out a little bit more about those. And areas. I think that's a great way to look at it. Is because, that, yeah. I'm, I'm just wondering if I'm looking yeah. at it in the right yes. way. Okay. Any other questions? Carol, go ahead. You schedule on 124, is that tentative, Deb? And once you get these back, will you then send some notification as to this is definitely a draft. Yeah, because you know, the elected officials and department heads availability and the budget reviewer board members availability will have to sync all that together into a schedule. But this is just to give you an idea of what that schedule could look like. Anybody else on this? Chris? Um, what will the state of the budgets be at the time that they're brought to this to this process? Basically, the departments will have prepared their request for fiscal 2012. They will have reviewed it to me. The revenues will have been vetted, and then they will present to you what their budget looks like. Is that something that will be released publicly or can be released publicly at that point or prior to that point? Well, the entire budget is released publicly at your October meeting. I, I understand that, but this is before the October meeting. So you're saying these are not... These were the requests are not have not been made public in the past. No. Do you feel that it's appropriate to make or not make the request public? The reason I the reason I ask is is one of the issues that uh, arose during the campaign. Something I was really interested in doing was, you know, encouraging people to uh, complain about the county spending money not when they get their tax bill, but when it might actually do some good, which is where they see what services the county is is using their money to pay for because I think people are you know largely unknowledgeable about all the things that the county does other than send them a tax bill every year so I think to the extent that we can make information available early so that those few members of the public who actually are interested can be encouraged to look at it and maybe come to their county board members with concerns and say hey why are we why are they asking for that or why are we spending the money on that so that we can actually bring that up in a timely fashion might be a significant improvement to the process. Now, I don't understand, I don't, having not been through this process before, I don't know to what extent, you know, this information is, is sensitive in terms of personnel information that might be contained in it or, uh, you know, department heads being concerned about making requests if they knew that that was going to be public. But I'm just trying to get at how much transparency we can inject into the process so that if there are citizens out there who are interested in getting involved, we can get them involved other than just having to come to the meeting where we vote up or down on the budget. And um, I'm not sure that releasing this information as it's presented to you, which is very department specific, would, um, I, I'm not sure how we would release it to the public and how it would address that concern, but I think um, you make a valid point and there are many counties and county boards who at that point or shortly thereafter would conduct a public hearing and to invite the public and to maybe talk about what are the financial critical issues for this budget that you're going to be receiving in October and approving in November. And that's certainly something that might be uh, very worthwhile. And at that point, I mean, what what these three days will involve is hundreds of pages of information which is not terribly friendly public 
public friendly, but to find a way to make it public friendly, I think is what you're asking for. Well, I, I guess, I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm new to this process, so I don't know the, the relevant costs that would be involved in taking this raw material and making it public friendly. I'm not sure I want to spend additional money on that, but you know, it seems like if this information is being communicated to board members electronically, it could probably be made available to the public electronically through the county website or, or similar manner. I don't understand yet what form this is in, but I think it's something that we don't have to decide tonight, but it's something we ought to be thinking about because I do think that there's a, a problem in the way the county has historically done the budget in that, you know, by the time someone in the public, the press, individuals out there who are particularly interested get involved in the process, it's usually just to come to the meeting where we vote up or down on the budget, at which point it's really too late to make any any, I think, effective prioritization of how the county's uh, proposing to, to develop the budget. Although some of that prioritization you're about to do in the next document that you're going to approve here tonight. Patsy. Uh, it's an information question. I might build on what Mr. Alex is uh, moving toward. It says, Department budget request shall be performance-based and focused on goals, objectives, and performance indicators. Um, is that kind of information for it each? It is all on our website right now. The 2011 budget has all of that information in it. You can look at individual department budgets, and that information is there. So what we will be doing is juxtapositioning uh, what the request for 2012 will be against what they had there for 2011. Is that accurate? Well, what you will be looking at is... Um, their statement of their operation and their need for funding for their operations, looking at what they actually spent in 2010, what they are anticipating will be spent in 2011, and what they are requesting for 2012. And it is focused in the area, the attempt is to focus in the area of what is achieved with the dollars that are appropriated to that department through the statement of objectives and performance indicators. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? As everyone knows that that sat through the budget hearings, uh, this would probably be an improvement because, like Deb said, you know, a lot of money being discussed in short order, and this will allow uh, board members to dig a little deeper. And I think that'll be a it's worth trying. The budget hearings have have not have generally not been as effective as as maybe we would like. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, and then the next item is the 2012 budget process resolution. Um, a couple of changes with this resolution. Uh, one of the primary ones is previously the annual budget process resolution also included the financial policies. Um, I don't think we need to adopt the financial policies every year, so we'll bring you a separate resolution in June for you to adopt financial policies, which should stand into the future until we find something that we need to amend or improve. So this resolution does not include those policies, which in previous years it had. It includes the um, calendar, um, taking into consideration what you just approved with regard to the county board's budget review. The direction for general corporate fund budget requests is that um, they pay close attention to revenue line items to ensure that if there are fees that should be reviewed, that that is done during this process, and that if there is any revenue structure changes that should be considered, that that is done during this process as well. Non-personnel expenditure lines are entered by salary administration in administrative services based on your direction. In June, you will also receive a resolution for non-bargaining salary increases, and of course, almost every labor contract is expired or will have expired by November 30th. So we will, um, the, what we budget for salaries is based on what those contract agreements end up being. So that will be a work in progress throughout this budget process. For non-personnel expenditure lines, and again, this is for the general corporate fund departments, this would direct them to incorporate a 0% change to their non-personnel expenditures for fiscal year 2012, with the exception of contractual obligations that they have that are based on competitively negotiated contracts for services, and documented need for increases based on changes in costs and commodity lines such as gasoline and oil, postage, things like that, which would be documented for you. 
Um, that's for the general corporate fund departments, for non-general corporate fund budget requests, that they, they would be presented and prepared for you in compliance with your balanced budget definition, that fund balance information will be required, will, would be provided, including any explanation of any change in fund balance of 10% or more, and documentation and analysis of their operations, expenditures, and revenues. Uh, this also directs that the capital asset replacement fund be funded in 2012 with full funding for future reserve, which has not been done for the last two years. And it would also provide direction from you that the contingent line be funded at 0.5% for the general corporate fund. Based on this year's budget, that would be right about $160,000 in the contingent line. Uh, this also directs that property tax revenue be calculated based upon the property tax extension limitation law. And that's basically what direction you would be, be providing at this point before we begin the budget process for the preparation of the budget to come back to you in August and September. Is there a motion to approve the resolution? Uh, by Larry, seconded by Geraldo. Uh, discussion? Pius. I was looking at the calendar. Um, I think we have a problem in that if we uh, re receive a place on file the budget on October 20th and vote on October, November 17th, it's only on file for 20 days. 15 days. Pardon? The requirement is 15 days. It's 15 days? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I thought it was 30. Did they change that recently? Uh, no, we had, it, we thought it we was thought 30. It. Okay. Three years ago, yeah. Chris? Is the 0.5% contingency customary or has that been reduced? Or? Um, well, before 2009, the goal was 1%. And it hasn't, out of the last 10 years, it's probably been funded maybe three years as you began the budget process. You're, you're it's three out of 10 years. You know, it's a goal at this point, but we may come back to you. Yeah. And, and, and that, that could yet happen with this process, but that's a decision you would make at that well, point. Well, I guess I'm not going to get much traction suggesting we raise it to 1% then if it hasn't even made it in 7 out of the 10 years, so I'll, I'll let it go. We, we always really, 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 really needed something. <laughs> and there it went. So how it always works. Other questions? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Deb. Thank you. Motion to accept the treasurer's report and place it on file by Brad. Is there a second by Lloyd? Any discussion on that? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Tony did email me earlier. He said that the bad purchases report will be emailed. Is there a motion to put his report on file? By Al, seconded by Astrid. Um, any questions on that? Uh, James? How do we put a report on file that we haven't received yet? Just, just the bad purchases are not there yet. Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. There's no other business. Is there any other business I should ask? Just a Al? One quick clarification on the memo that we received. The dates were corrected, but also I want it known that the commission has been discussing more than one map. Uh, can, you speak, can you speak up, Al? Uh, you speak up. Okay. Uh, under the under discussion in the commission, we have been discussing more, but it's, it says here second map. Uh, it could mean maps. Uh, we will have perhaps multiple maps coming to the board on the 19th. Uh, there has been in discussion uh, that possibility. So I want to make it clear that it could be more than one map coming to the board. Yep. And I, I just uh, talked to Pius. We're in, in any other business not necessarily related to finance. Al Nudo. Chairs. Um, everybody has in front of them, and I apologize, Mr. Langenheim, I didn't have my name on it, a, um, a multi-column um, chart here yeah. that I'm going to suggest we add to the two committee of the whole uh, process. The reason why I didn't introduce it during the discussion is because we're missing five of our rural guys and they're out farming and I want to have them here to, to have participation in the discussion. I would encourage everybody to take a look at this and give me some thoughts on how we can make it better. But what I'm getting at here is 
Uh, I know that most people are dissatisfied with how Committee of the Whole works in terms of length of time, uh, discussion uh, being unorganized in terms of how people are called upon to speak. We have in our Robert, Robert's rules, actually, that the first person can speak only after everybody has spoken the first time. And it's pretty hard as the chair to keep track of it. Brendan does a great job of it. But it's pretty hard to keep track of who has spoken and who has not spoken. And I, I think for the purpose of conversation, I'd like to get, this is something that Kat put together for me and I'm greatly appreciative. The number of minutes that shows there, it could be five minutes for the first time, it could be three minutes for the second. I don't have a, I don't have a, a horse in the race as far as the amount of time. But this should force all speakers to collect their thoughts and say what they want to say in one, in one opportunity, or at most, if it's a spirited discussion, two opportunities. And finally, you could have final comments in there. But I, I really, uh, this is done in a number of different uh, governmental bodies right here in the county where times are kept, where people are, uh, they keep track of who speaks and who doesn't speak. And I, I'm just wanting to get a little more organized in this. And yet, I don't want to cut off discussion for Committee of the Whole. That's where I think we get the most discussion, the most opportunity for people to explain or ask questions, that kind of thing. So if you have multiple questions, instead of doing it three or four different times, be prepared to speak one time and say it, uh, ask your questions all at once. Uh, and I, I'm not expecting debate on this right now. I'm just saying I'm going to introduce this. I'm going to lobby people uh, in between the time of now and uh, the next meeting and get your thoughts. So uh, that's all I'm trying to get accomplished here. Uh, Mr. Newell is, is correct. If Once you have the floor, you can ask as many questions as you want. We have this tendency to say, can I have another question? You don't have to ask me that. Just do it. You have the floor, you can speak. One thing I can do is we can actually start keeping track. We can time people to figure out what what is the, the average amount of time we're speaking on items? Maybe do that for a couple of months. And I can buy a little time and, and I can do that just to collect some data. We like data, right? Exactly. I, I'm open I'm open to how we can make our committee of the whole more organized, go faster, and yet get everybody the opportunity to ask their questions and have every board and everybody have collected thoughts as to how they want to speak to the body. Thank you. Green and red light. Al. Uh, uh, I have to disagree. <clears throat> there are times during discussions when questions pop in our minds that we don't have uh, time before speaking. That's the first thing when someone else brings up a point. Uh, my constituents expect me to work for them and for this county and to be uh, confined to a minute or two minutes or three minutes, uh, I, I don't feel comfortable with that at all. Uh, I feel if I have to make my point and then I have to respond to another question or another concern that I should have that right as an elected official. And uh, I certainly don't agree that I should be limited to a three minute and then a two minute and then a one minute and then say, well, sorry, Al, you can't talk anymore because, well, we don't have enough time. Well, I think we do and I think we need to have as much time as we need to discuss uh, any of these subjects. Well, not not to combat that, but we should just get all comments to Al. <laughs> to Alan, right? Because that's what you're asking for is comments to go. So so rather than rather than have all the discussion now, get him the comments so that we can we can introduce it and then discuss it. Fair. Fair. All right, Carol. I just want to clarify, Mr. Um, under policy tonight, we voted to change our committee structure. Well, you approved the date change, and um, I assume that we could put uh, an amended calendar for June through November with the resolution when you approve it at the board meeting next week. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's no chair's report from finance. The consent agenda items from finance are A1, B1, C1, D1, and E4, 5, and 6. I'm sorry, A1 doesn't go to the board. Thanks, Deb. And on to Pius for the closed session minutes. Uh, I seek approval of the committee of the whole minutes for the closed session of April 12, 2011, which you've all looked at. Mr. Gonzalez moves it or a second. 
Ms. Ammons, discussion? We have, we've got a discussion, got to go to closed session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Thank you. We're adjourned.